Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of the DC Capstone Report. It's great to have everybody back this week talking about another Alabama Crimson Tide victory over the Texas A&M Aggies. Uh, I want to thank all of you who tune in each week and listen to us. You know, Lance Shorge is what makes this thing run. He's back in the studio producing the podcast and getting everything together. Uh, and I always want to tell you to check out Lance's other sites, FreelancePictures.com and, and uh, RollTideBama.com, especially this week after this week's homecoming game. He'll have a bunch of pictures up there of all the homecoming festivities and the opportunity for anyone interested in Alabama football to get some great pictures. Well, today on the podcast, we get to talk about the victory over the Texas A&M Aggies. So in the first segment, we're going to review the, uh, the victory over the Texas A&M. In the second segment, we're going to talk about our players of the game. And then our third and final segment, we're going to preview the upcoming game, the homecoming game, this Saturday against the Arkansas Razorbacks. You're listening to the D.C. Capstone Report. The D.C. Capstone Report is featured each Tuesday morning on the Martin Houston Show at Tide 100.9. You can listen live at Tide100.9.com. Welcome back to the podcast here on the DC Capstone Report. We sure thank you for tuning in and listening to us each week talk about Alabama football. And what a week we have to talk about a great victory. Uh, my notes from the game, the first thing I wrote down, what a great win. A great win on the road at Texas A&M. Kyle Field, one of the toughest places I feel like to play in the SEC. Uh, been there, uh, got to experience a game there back in 2014, and the the crowd noise is loud. They are into the stadium, uh, they are into the game, very passionate, uh, and they just did a good job in this game of making it loud for Alabama. And I think when you go in and you don't play your best, and you still come away with a victory in a hostile environment, uh, you know I think it's a very big win for our team. So. Overall, the, just look at the big picture. I don't think we played the best in the first half. We you know, went, went into the locker room, you know, down. Uh, Texas A&M had scored 14 points in the second quarter and, and went up. Uh, and we were, it, you know, 17 to 10 at that point. And uh, it looked like that they were, they were controlling the line of scrimmage and doing some things differently in the game. And I think the turning point came in the, in the second half. Uh, we came out, the overall picture was that we played so much better, scored 14 points in the third quarter, and held Texas A&M to three points. Yes, just held them to a field goal in the second half. So I thought, I thought our defense played a great game. Gave up some points in the first half, but really played a, a great game. And it, it didn't have to be as close as it was, a 26-20 to 20 victory. You know, had a touchdown call back on, on, on a suspect call. You know, I don't think it was a blindside block. It was definitely not the kind of block that the blindside block was placed into play to protect players. But anyway, we got a, a touchdown call back on a great punt block and return for a touchdown. Uh, but, but still, we did a good job of, 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 uh, of, of going into the situation and, and taking advantage of, of what, the, what the offense was doing and learned from it the first half and, and did a good job of playing against them in the second half. So we have to give kudos to our our uh, our defense for making the adjustments at halftime. But I thought we played overall really, really good on defense. There's times here that you could look at that, that line in the second half and realize that we had really done a good job of, of, of playing them in the first half. We may not have held them uh, scoreless or to, as we did in the touchdown in the second half, but we did a good job of playing them and continuing to, to play in, in our defensive line, continuing to hit them. It looked like in the second half, and it's uncharacteristic for a Texas A&M team, they always have a big offensive line that's able to sustain and, and really play well. But it looked like in the second half that our defensive line was winning the line of scrimmage, and that's what you have to do. And to a point where it, it, on several plays, our defensive players were walking into the backfield uh, and taking advantage of a tired Texas A&M line and where we had hit on them all day, and I think it was really good to see that. It's good to see us impose our will as a defense. You know, another thing I thought was really good on the defensive side of the ball was we gave we, – we, we had some opportunities for our defense to give up and give in inside the red zone, uh, and we didn't. You know, they, they, they bent to a point where they got the ball deep in the red zone, but they held them. Uh, they stopped them, and, and all of those – and all of those plays, in my opinion, was a great uh, opportunity to see 
um, uh, uh, what this defense is resiliency. So uh, I think they stood the time, the test of time so far. You know, we're going through these games now to a point where the defense is improving each and every game. And I think that uh, we're getting in a championship form defense. I think this is the kind of defense that can propel us uh, to another championships as long as we can help them out uh, when we play on the offense. Now, that, the offensive side of the ball, we look kind of a helicopter view of an overview of what we did in the Texas A&M game. You know, basically, uh, I don't believe we did a good job of committing to run the ball in this game. Uh, I, if, you, if you look, I don't think the offensive coordinator called the correct plays uh, to get us in a good scheme of running. Uh, I don't think we uh, ran anything other than a, than a left, left guard, right guard, center run the ball. No sweeps, no tosses, no uh, screen passes, no, nothing that would have helped us in the running game. I don't think we did a good job of doing that. However, our offense really stepped up to the plate in, in passing the ball. And I think Jalen Milrow showed some really, really good improvement as a passer. And some of our wide receivers stepped up and showed some improvement as well. But getting back, if, if we don't commit to the run, I think it's going to hurt us down the road in some big games. We're going to have to run the ball and commit to the run. One of the things that I want to point out that I thought was just a glaring mistake in, this, in the, in the, in the uh, preparation or in the calling of the game was we, on, the, on the one interception that Jalen Milrow had deep down the field, the safety picked that ball off on a deep throw. That was a play-action pass off of a toss, tweet. And we faked the tall sweep and then threw deep. And we didn't set that play up. We had not run that in any game since Middle Tennessee State. And we had definitely not run it in that game. In order for that play to work, you got to get the safety to bite. you got to get the safety to come up. His, he is to cover the middle of the field deep. So you've got to get that safety to believe that we're going to run the ball. We have to come up and help on run support to get that open. If we had run that play a couple of times and then come back to it in the second half, I believe that would have been a touchdown. You know, I'm sure that Jalen Milrow could have thrown the ball better, would like to have that back. But still, I don't think you set your you – you're not helping your quarterback there. You're not helping your team there by th running a play uh, off a of play action that you hadn't even run in the game or in any game leading up to that uh, since the opening game. So uh, that's just something that I think we need to clean up, some of our calls, some of our way we run the ball. Uh, call more sweeps, run the, run the off the uh, pistol formation with some – running the quarterback some, uh, run some uh, jet sweeps to get those uh, wide receivers out uh, in space, out on the outside, run some screen passes. To, uh, Texas A&M was, was, was uh, trying to pressure every time that we had going to a pass. Well, let them come in and let's throw a screen pass and get behind all those, run, uh, those linemen and linebackers and, and get some chunk guarded. So – I think we could do a good job of helping our team offensively by running the ball consistently. And I don't think we did a good job of that in this game. However, we did a good job of passing the ball. Uh, Jalen Milrow was good on his intermediate passing and his, and his downfield passing. Really great on the deep ball. Easy to see that. And one of the reasons he was so good was two of our wide receivers that I think can make an impact in this, on this team going forward stepped up in this game big time. Jermaine Burton. Uh, he stepped up big time in this game, did a really good job, had his best game ever. Uh, uh, nine receptions for 197 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, got some deep shots to him that he did well on. And then Isaiah Bond, he had seven receptions for 96 yards and a touchdown. So uh, your two receivers there uh, really stepped up to the plate really good, in, in my opinion, uh, to, to see that going forward. So. Uh, I think the pre-snap penalties were, was a, a problem in this one. We've got to clean up those mistakes. We also had some balls that were put on the ground a lot in this game. Uh, you know, we had four fumbles. We only lost one of them, but, uh, and that's, a, that's good. But we had four fumbles in this game, so we've got we to limit our penalties and limit our mistakes. Some things that we can clean up. So, overall, great victory against Texas A&M. Great play by our defense. Really a great play in the second half to do, make those adjustments. And... I believe there's some things that we can do to help our offense, help our quarterback play better, help our running game play better, uh, to do a little more diversity in our calling, calling a little more variety, if you will, of running plays to help us in the passing game going forward. Well, welcome back here on the second segment. We're going to talk about our players of the game. But before we do that, as always, I want to encourage you to go out there and look at Lance's sites, RollTideBama.com and FreelancePictures.com sponsors of the podcast, as well as our sponsor that allows us to be in with you each and every week, 
That's Karen Cottingham, realtor, right here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, with the Williams Group at Keller Williams. For all your real estate needs, if you're trying to buy, if you're trying to sell, if you need someone to talk to you about the real estate market, Karen is the one to call. That's Karen Cottingham, 205-887-4008. Or you can look at her website and check out all the listings at www.karen.thewilliamsgroupal.com. Again, that's Karen Cottingham, The Williams Group at Keller Williams for all your real estate needs, 205-887-4008. Well, back here on the second segment, we're going to talk about our players of the game. And uh, this week uh, on players of the game on offense, I could have chose a couple of players, but in my opinion, the one that made the difference this week on offense was Jermaine Burton. Uh, Jermaine Burton showed up. Probably had his best game ever. As I've already said in the first uh, uh, segment, he had nine receptions for 197 yards, uh, two TDs. Uh, he did uh, really good on running the ball, running the uh, 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 passes, uh, running the running the pass routes. Uh, did some good job on cutting, uh, and really good job of getting open. Uh, I think he really had a matchup that he liked in this game and was able to beat the defender a couple of times for, for even some 50-50 balls. So. Uh, on offense, Jermaine Burton was my player of the game. On defense, I could have picked a variety of players on defense. Across that defensive line, uh, they were really imposing their will. Tim Smith, Jaheim Otis, Justin Aborgby, all of them had big games in this game. Then you got Chris Bradwell, Dallas Turner. Both of them had huge games in this game. Then in the backfield, Terion Arnold and uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry and Caleb Downs all had big plays in this game. But the player that I picked uh, was, I figured, I, I found to be the player that had his best game ever as an Alabama football player, and that is uh, Tim Keenan. Uh, Tim Keenan the third on defense had eight total tackles. He had four of them were solo tackles. He had one sack and one tackle for loss. And it looked like that he was in the backfield almost on every play. He was winning his play at the line of scrimmage every time. And so I think Tim Keenan has really stepped up. And that's really good because on that defensive line, the interchangeable parts with Tim Smith, Tim Keenan, uh, Justin Aborgby, Jaheim Otis, uh, just really make a difference there uh, uh, in winning that line of scrimmage. And I think that's been a big success for our defense going forward. So Tim Keenan is my defensive player of the game. And my special teams player of the game this week has to be Will Reichard. You know, in this game, Will Rocker was one of one on field goal attempts. It was a 39-yard-long uh, field goal, and he had three of three on extra points for six points. So he was perfect in the field goals. But in, in, in my opinion, uh, Will Riker comes in and backs up our punter, and he goes in there and averages a, a, a 41.3 yards uh, punt for on four punts. Uh, he, he down one inside the, the the ten yard line that really helped us lead to a safety in that in that series, and then he had a forty five long point punt. Now James Burnett punted twice and he had a long of sixty three, a huge punt, but he got injured on that play I believe and had to come out of the game. And then Will Riker steps up. Who we I think Will Riker is the most underrated player on this team uh, and did a great job. So. Uh, our player of the, my player of the game is on offense, Jermaine Burton. On defense, Tim Keenan. And on special teams, Will Riker. Well, welcome back to the D.C. Capstone Report, our third and final segment. Let me remind you all again to thank you for Lance Shores. He does a great job. Check out his sites, RollTideBabble.com, FreelancePictures.com, and our sponsor, Karen Cottingham, Realtor of the Williams Group here at Keller Williams, 205-887-4008. Well, on the fin final segment is the upcoming game against the Arkansas Razorbacks. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to this. It's homecoming, and it's an early start. So let's talk about this. Early start in this game, important for us to come out really passionate, really engaged, and ready to play this game because we don't want to get behind this game. We want to start fast. Uh, we've had a tendency to, to do better in the second half in some of our games, but on the, at home, we want to come out and start fast. So we want to play really good, skilled, offensive in this game. How do we do that? Well, I've been preaching it all year, and I think we've got to get our running game into involved in this game. We've got to run some variety of plays, a diversity of plays. We've got to try to sweep. We've got to try the draw. We've got to try the trap play, along with the other plays that we run. We've got to pull and let the quarterback run. 
uh, in this game. I think we, th this is a perfect, perfect game. I believe the way Arkansas has played in the last couple of games, we've seen they've been susceptible to running the ball. You know, Ole Miss did a good job in this last game of running the ball. So we've got to run the ball against them to set up the play action passes. And they have proven to give up some big chunk plays uh, when, when they, they fall uh, victim to the play action passing because they're trying to stop the run. So in this game, I hope that we use all of our running backs that we have confidence in. And I think the first four running backs need to get into the game. I think we need to give more carries so that Jason McClellan, Roydell Williams, Jam Miller, and Justice Haynes even gets in to get some carries in this game against Arkansas. I think he can really feed uh, the way they play defense if we can really attack it with a run. And then don't we don't give up on the passing game. We use the running game to set up the passing game in the play-action passes. Use that play that didn't work against Texas A&M, but run it several times before you try to do a pa uh, play-action pass off of it. So that's, I think, a key to this game is establishing the run. And I believe we can do that in this game. Well, I think Jalen Milrow has to have a good game as well. No turnovers, got limited mistakes, uh, make some good passes, some deep shots downfield. I think he can take advantage of, of, of the play uh, that uh, Arkansas does in the secondary take some deep shots downfield and, and get some chunk plays and even score on some big touchdowns. I think I think he has a big game in this game. Our offensive line does well, and we come out big winners on offense and kind of clean up some of the, those pre-snap penalties and other mistakes. The crowd needs to be loud at 11 o'clock. It's homecoming. Uh, we need to be really loud at 11 o'clock to, to, to affect uh, them while they're on offense. You know, they have a great quarterback that's been there a while. He is tall, he's hard to bring down, he's hard to sack. But we need to continue to do that. We need to pressure on defense. And on defense, we need to keep putting pressure on the quarterback so we can get some picks in this game, get some turnovers in this game, and, and affect the quarterback when he's, when he's trying to throw the ball. We need to stop the run uh, when they pass the ball, pressure the quarterback so that we can get some turnovers. And we need to, the number one thing on defense is we need to contain the quarterback so that he doesn't extend plays on third down we need to get off the field on third down. Uh, we need to make sure that we have on the field more and wear their defense out more than they or than they are on the field. And the only way you do that is get off the field on third down when you have the opportunity. So make sure that we keep their quarterback in the pocket. We don't allow him to use his legs to extend those plays on third downs. And we got to limit our mistakes and penalties. I believe if we do all of that, if we limit our mistakes and penalties, if we if we pressure the quarterback, get some turnovers. We run the ball really well in this game to set up the pass. This sets up for a huge game for us uh, to, to come out uh, another victory in the West that, that again, helps us solidify our, stop, uh, our spot as the number one team in the West. And uh, I, I believe if we do all that, we come out of here with a great victory. And I got the score, final score being Alabama 42 Arkansas 21, Alabama 42, Arkansas 21. And the last thing I want to leave you with, uh, it's, it, there's a, uh, a, a weather event that's going to happen during this game. And I want to tell if you're going to the game, be very careful. It's very serious. It's going to be a, a partial eclipse. And you'll be tempted to look at it uh, during the second quarter of this ball game. Uh, I want to remind you, don't look at it unless you have protective eyewear that's suitable for looking at eclipses. Uh, if you, you, you can really damage your eyes in this one. So it, it's the first time I can remember that such an event is taking place during a ball game uh, with that many thousands of people there and you can see it clearly. So uh, try not to do that. Keep, make, keep yourself healthy uh, and don't look at it directly if you, if you don't have the suitable eyewear to do that. Well, thank you for tuning in this week. We appreciate all of you on the DC Capstone Report, all of our listeners, all of our chatters, all of our people who, 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 talk, who, who give us feedback. Uh, share it. Share our podcast. Check us out at, on Twitter at DavidCott50, uh, on Facebook at DC Capstone Report, and on, and on, on our online page at DCCapstoneReport.com. Well, this is DC uh, for Lance Shores and the DC Capstone Report signing off this week. Looking for another victory as Alabama beats Arkansas this week, 42-21. to 21. That's all for this week. We'll see you next week. We end the show with a big roll tide.